basically Brickfields is a very small area. Uh, I'm located in one of these shop lots from the 1910s or 1920s. Uh, I don't know exactly when. Uh, I have a little room here and a bit of uh, the common area. Um, so now going up the stairs, you would see all my bicycles here. I have about three bikes here. Um, and I use different bikes for different service. This is the project area, my project table and my project shelf. Each shelf uh, denotes one, e one project <laughs> that I have to finish. Uh, then uh, into the room I have um, four working tables. One working table is my computer, uh, the other one is my largest and larger, which is the 4x5 dust. And then the other one is my two other small and larger. And my shelf where I usually keep all my cameras and then all my box cameras upstairs. Then uh, my chemical shelf, where I, I keep all the spent chemicals, uh, my mixing and my graduates, and my fridge, Kantasajo, which was donated to me by my good friend Hans and Bonnie. Um, and of course, if you open up my fridge, it's just full of my papers and my chemicals. <laughs> it's the best way to preserve them and my, my film. I usually mainly just use paper. Um, and then a lot of storage area, uh, as you know, this is actually my storage, it's meant to be my storage, but now it's my studio. Uh, and it's also a dark room uh, when I have to do prints and so on. Um, so basically my studio, yeah, it's pretty small, that's what I do. It's also my library. Uh, well, I have a, I have a little trolley I just bought last year or a few years ago, and I wanted to limit myself in the amount of books I have. Everything has to fit on this trolley. I used to have a big library. Well, not big. I have a lot of books, um, but I find that I don't read as many as much of them. Uh, so I want to limit myself. That's why I had this trolley, and then uh, it really limits me to really important books that I have that I want to read about. The studio um, has many parts. My studio to me, uh, I have a project table. Um, it is a place for me, it's a workshop where I build things for my work, um, which is mainly photography and cameras. Uh, a shooting studio, I, I do a lot of shoots. Uh, it's also my library and my archive, you know, I, I, I do a lot of reading and uh, a lot of research and a lot of thinking and writing, and sketching ideas, exploring ideas, finding ways of expressing myself, my ideas and my understanding. Um, it's also a dark room, actually I built my Brickfield studio to be a dark room as well. Um, I do some painting and drawings. It's also where I can experiment with types of printing. Uh, lately I've been uh, exploring different mediums. It's still photography based, you know, but there, there's so many ways of making a print. And alternative printing because um, I don't have access to a lot of um, different machines and different chemicals. I only have the basic black and white um, paper and the black and white chemicals. So I really push what I can do with them, from doing solography and, and doing uh, photograms and um, doing uh, cyanotype and combining all of them together on the same paper. So it's very interesting, you can get many colors from a black and white sheet. And then of course the forms that you want to print, what can you print on it. So that's, that's really interesting, that's what I've been exploring. Um,
I've done many stuff, many work, self-initiative projects, but I guess the main two projects that many of you or many people know about is the Cycling Kuala Lumpur map. It's the bicycle map that I did. Uh, I started in 2012 and I published in 2014. This Cycling Kuala Lumpur is, is basically a campaign. It's, it's a bicycle map. It's about 110 square kilometers of Kuala Lumpur, downtown, KL included. And I mapped out all the cyclable routes and rate each route uh, differently. So there are different categories of roads that you can cycle on and uh, type of safety and so on and so forth. Um, this was done over a span of two and a half years involve uh, countless uh, volunteers, I think in the hundreds, hundreds of volunteers in collecting data, um, surveying, collaborating as well with the city council. I think we printed about 15,000 maps so far, distributed around the world, mainly in Malaysia, but it's also around the world. That sort of spearheaded uh, cycling infrastructure in the city brought to the forefront um, cycling agenda. So now we start to see a lot of cycling infrastructure in the city. So this campaign um, was about trying to change perception about cycling or actually mobility uh, and about the city. So on the surface, that was what it was about. It's about um, mobility and changing perception of how you move um, but on the, on the side I did a lot of cultural studies with the map I don't talk a lot about it um, but if you do study the map you would find that I've mapped out all the rivers as well or rivers that I could find and all of these are unknown rivers because they don't exist on any maps um, and uh, I had to source from old maps and old stories and you start to find all these old names of maps, of, of, of rivers. Um, for example, uh, um, Sungai um, Bukit Mati, uh, Sungai Berberas, um, and, and many more. So that's, that's one cultural aspect, uh, because if you do follow all these rivers to their source, you would find a village. <laughs> so there is Sungai Petaling, and if you go to the Ed, the end of Sungai Petaling, you would find a village there. So that's, that's interesting because that is how our city formed. Uh, we needed clean water source. So if you go to all the sources of the river, that's where the cleanest you can get. And that's where all the villages would be. And that was really interesting because uh, there are still villages in KL City. And uh, the, the second project is uh, Kanta Portraits, um, which is a box camera, which I travel around and I, I collect stories and I make portraits of people along the way. And then, uh, and then it evolved into Kantra Portraits where I explored this uh, concepts of identity mainly in the city and then uh, traveling to rural areas with indigenous people in Peninsula and also Sabah and Sarawak and then uh, through using this linguistics uh, as a point of reference um, I actually went to Taiwan and, and uh, researched a lot about indigenous people there and our connection to, to them. Uh, the Austronesian language group. Um, so that is, the, and I've done many portraits. I think um, I have a, a camera that can print instantly, black and white. And I had an exchange between their narratives and then I will make a portrait of them. They will receive the portrait immediately and then that's uh, our form of exchange. And, and then with me coming out, uh, I made a few installations and exhibition 
of that work. What am I working on right now? Um, I am working on rebuilding my cameras. Uh, what cameras I have? I built. Uh, I've rebuilt three cameras. I bought two cameras, which are uh, large format cameras. One of them is from the 1800s, and another one is from the 70s. They're both broken, so I had to build them and refit them. And then uh, I had an old camera, one of my old box camera, I had to refit and build them for, for use. And then I'm working on a new camera, which I call Tanki. Uh, and it's made from a HDPE uh, container from, uh, I collected from the Palm Oil Estate. So that's, that's currently my, my, what I'm working on, building a new arsenal of camera. Uh, mainly to do a workshop, I, I am going to start a series of workshop to um, partially to to show how the camera works and then of course people who are interested to understand how to print as well so it's shooting and printing at the same time but then uh, it's it's a series of workshop so it's not just shooting and printing but it's also what you can do with print subject matter and different alternative printing and coloring uh, so I think there's six modules so I was planning to have the first workshop on 30th of January, but of course uh, that didn't happen with the lockdown. So perhaps after the lockdown. That's also a collective I started. Uh, well, we started a collective. It's called Kota Camera Trio. In Malaysia right now, there are three of us who have this box camera. So it's really cool that we have that many people here in Malaysia. So we started a collective uh, called the Kotak Camera Trio. Of course, you can expand beyond a trio. Uh, but at, to start with, there's three of us. That's me. Uh, there's Anton. He's in Penang. And then there's Nuru Huda. She's in Shah Alam. And uh, we're going to do a few projects together this year. So we are really, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, apart from that, I've been writing a few proposals. Um, I guess one of them is working on this concept of non-recorded medium. The form of it, it's um, the physical form or the tangible form, is actually going to be a huge camera. It's probably the size of a tent, uh, eight by eight feet, and it's mobile, so I could print huge prints in that camera, and. Um, I think it's poster size print, 20 by 30 inch. Uh, but then with exploring that, it can, I also can explore my other ideas about projection and um, playing with audio. 